So, Bismarck created a liberal Germany in 1871 and then destroyed liberalism. How justified is this view? Well, that's the question you've got to handle. And there's really a couple of things I want to sort of talk to you about, or more than a couple really. But uh, first of all, the whole thing is around, so how much consciously was Bismarck in control of events, like, you know, doing one thing with liberalism and then destroying liberalism and going another direction? Was Bismarck really manipulating events in Germany, you know, up to 1871 and then uh, before his resignation in 1890? That's the kind of big picture of the whole thing. I think if we look at the question, there's a sort of balance, two opportunities to balance in one, the first part of the question, the second part of the question. So the balance in the first part of the question is about the actual empire in 1871, just how liberal was it? Uh, you know, the whole thing of universal suffrage in the Reichstag um, and that actual institution itself being a liberal empire and the German states being brought together, one could say they were liberal aims. So how liberal was it, the empire was created in 1871, or how much was it actually a conservative-based empire? Look at the, the nature of the Bundesrat, the constitution, the control that the conservative Prussian state had over the apparatus of the German empire, um, and indeed was it some more conservative and monarchical dominated. So we've got questions about the actual empire that was created, liberal or conservative. Then I think in the first part of the question we're also looking to say look, how much of a deal was this Bismarck's personal policy? Was it something that he created, so it emerged because of him shaping events, or were events shaped, for example, by the nationalist upsurge, say, in Luxembourg in 1867, which was something perhaps Bismarck is said not to quite have realised? That's, I think, a slightly smaller part of the first bit of the question. So once we've got that out of the way, we're then looking at the second part of the question, which is an analysis of, of the policies that happened in Germany from 1870 through to uh, 1890. And in that second part of the question, we're asking uh, for the question, after um, 1870, how much is it true to say that liberalism was destroyed? So that's what the question says, Bismarck destroyed liberalism, so was it actually destroyed by 1890? One can look at things like um, the effect on the Liberal Party of the change in tariff legislation in 1879, the lowering, the, they lost seats, um, anti-liberal legislation like anti-socialist laws being passed, the National Liberal Party splitting up in 1884, and so on and so forth, and one might say, does that equal liberalism is destroyed? So you've got to come to a view on that. And, and I think finally, then contained in that part of the question is how much did anything that Bismarck do, was he the sort of puppet master behind the scenes, just deciding, well, I'm going to work with liberals, you know, up until as far as, you know, 1876, 77, with Kultekamp and that, and then when I think I don't need them, I'm going to change my policy, and then I'll actually actively work to destroy them, because they're stopping me maybe attacking the socialists or the other things that I want to do. So you've kind of got to decide those two parts of the question. Personally, I think that it really sets itself up well for a kind of straw man approach. I would imagine you could kind of say on the surface for the first part, on the surface it looks as though Bismarck created um, a liberal Germany in 1871 and you could look at him working with the Liberals, um, working with the Indemnity Bill to get the Indemnity Bill in 1867, forgiving him for all that sort of nasty, illiberal form of government um, in the lead-up to the Austro-Prussian War, and then creating this uh, amazing universal suffrage Reichstag in 1871. Um, and so on the surface it looks liberal, and indeed one could then go and say, actually on the surface it looks like between 1871 and 1890 Bismarck destroyed liberalism. Although he worked with them initially in the Coulter camp, there's all these nasty things that happened to liberals, say between 1878 and, and sort of 1890, loss of seats, legislation perhaps they wouldn't have supported, um, and so on and so forth. All, it just should add really that if you're on that line, um, uh, I think you, you you would probably take a look within that at the type of Germany that was created in uh, in between 1871 and let's say 1877 78 
And that's important too, because I think there's a lot of liberal reforms that happen in the Reichstag. And I think in that part of the question, it's really important you actually get to grips with liberalism and, and who liberals were. So please mention uh, someone like Edward Lasker, who's an 1848 liberal revolutionary, founder, a lawyer, founder of the National Liberal Party in mid 1860s, He's a Prussian. He sat in the Prussian Landtag and also in the uh, German Reichstag responsible for this incredible codification of the German legal system, bringing all the different laws of the provinces together, which is one of the great liberal achievements, actually, up to 1870s. He actually does also oppose Bismarck. Uh, he really opposes his friend over financial mismanagement over the Pomeranian Railway, which gets his Bismarck's mate kicked off in 1873. Bismarck didn't like him a lot after that. And Lasker is one of the liberals who split from the National Liberal Party over the anti-socialist legislation in um, the 1880s. And of course the other Liberal you need to mention is the President of the National Liberal Party, uh, Rudolf Benningsen, another founder of the National Liberal Party. And he's really important because he's the one who really brokers compromises with Bismarck in 1874 over the military bill. You know, the Liberals wanted to make it much shorter so the Reichstag had more say in the vote over the military and uh, Benningson brokers the compromise, the, the seven year bill. He's also the guy who Bismarck tries to bring into the cabinet in 1877, but Benningson says, Not unless you bring these two more radical colleagues of mine in, and Bismarck says, No, I'm not having that. So he never gets a seat. But uh, he, interestingly, he's one of those who opposes Bismarck's uh, first socialist bill that he brings in. Um, and encourages the Rice Act to reject that bill. And then, of course, there's all these, you know, elections and so on, the Liberals get kicked out. So Benningson's really important. And I think um, he does actually resign his seat in the Reichstag in 1883 at the, pro at the protest of things, you know, these dreadful May laws, including the Social Democrats and so on. So I think you need to show a bit about liberalism and, and what it actually was. So I mentioned that. But then we go the other side of the question, the straw man. I would certainly attack the notion that the, the empire created by Bismarck in 1867 and 1871 was liberal. I'd say it was pretty much dominated by the Prussian monarchy. It was controlled by the Bundesrat, the Federal Council. Um, and in fact, it was therefore a very um, conservative controlled monarchy. It went a long way to being the first sort of democracy. But the Reichstag had this massive power of the military budget, but then had to vote it away for seven years. So actually, there were no ministers responsible to the Reichstag. And that was really not something that was very liberal. So I think Bismarck's sort of plan is that really that Prussia does dominate not just the German Empire, but all of the German states. And it will dominate the Reichstag because Bismarck can basically ignore the Reichstag. He's kind of got to, you know, get along with them if, if he can, but he can kind of manipulate them. I, I don't really see that this empire is, in fact, a liberal empire. I think it's an empire which is created, which Bismarck says, I will get along with liberalism if liberals want to get along with me. Um, and therefore, I don't see the empire as um, something that's liberal. I think the other aspect of this straw man is then to attack destroyed liberalism. Liberalism is, whatever Bismarck thinks of it, undoubtedly a crucial force in the empire. I think we can see that from the Kulterkampf, Bismarck taking on these very dramatic policies against the wishes of the king to destroy Catholic influences in Prussia. Um, but liberalism is still really important within you know, the empire. So there's a whole lot of policies which create sort of Germany uh, a kind of united Germany. Not, we talked about the judicial system, you've got the uh, legal codes, then you've got the railroad system, the banking systems, you know, the, uh, the whole thing of the currencies being integrated, the civil service being integrated within Germany. These are all liberal reforms, and what liberals want is more representation in government. They want to have this link like Great Britain, a constitutional monarchy, and they think if we follow Bismarck, that's what they'll get. Many of the Liberals will stop and say, we will not support the, um, the measures like the anti-socialist laws in, uh, that Bismarck was proposing in the 1880s. And that is their principle. But some of them won't. And some of them, the more right-wing, the more industrialists, will see this conservative um, alliance in their interests. And we can see how Bismarck uses the conservatives. They they sort of 
fed up initially that he supports you know what seems to them an anti-Prussian empire but then all of a sudden the conservatives come round at the end of the 1870s they see that it hasn't destroyed Prussia Prussian influence is strong and so the liberals split and I think that's pretty much a function of looking at the danger of what they might face from socialism and making common end and, and, and trying to sort of cut their losses economically speaking um, I'm not sure how much Bismarck is the arch manipulator behind that. I think certainly he's, he's taking advantage of conditions. So I think that's important. Above all, I think you've got to stress that you know Bismarck is in control of the Prussian constitution, and the Prussian constitution is in control of Germany. So take a look at the land tag. It's very conservative. It's got the three-tier system. The Liberals have got to compete and vote in what is essentially a conservative Prussian land tag. And in effect, they've got to work within a conservative system. So to my mind, I don't think it's fair to say that liberalism was destroyed. I think it was still a very important part of the empire. I think liberals suffered as a result of Prussian and Bismarck's policies, but not destroyed. So I kind of think, try a straw man for that sort of argument and see how you get on. Good luck.